ACV, Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2, was first identified in December 2019 as the infectious agent of COVID-19. Neurological symptoms have been reported in COVID-19 patients, and rising evidence shows that SARS-CoV-2 is neuroinvasive. In view of that, this video will introduce the neurological symptoms of COVID-19, the possible neuroinvasion routes of SARS-CoV-2, the cytokine storm effects in the brain, the involvement of P2X7 receptor and ATP-gated ion channel in COVID-19 neuropathology, and the involvement of SARS-CoV-2 and P2X7 receptors in neuropsychiatric and neurodegenerative disorders. All these topics are discussed in more detail in the article published in Molecular Psychiatry entitled Hyperactivation of P2X7 Receptors as a Culprit of COVID-19 Neuropathology, which was written by Professor Henning Ulrich, Drs. Dijane Elisa Ribeiro and Agatha Oliveira Giacomelli, in collaboration with Professor Claudiana Lameu, Marius Ratajczak and Luis Dickmann, beyond the participation of other students from the University of Sao Paulo. SARS-CoV-2 invades cells using spike protein, which binds to the angiotensin-converting enzyme 2 receptors and is primed by transmembrane serine protease 2. SARS-CoV-2 enters the cell through the receptor-mediated endocytosis or via extracellular microvesicles, which are shed from the infected cells. Although acute and long-term neural consequences of SARS-CoV-2 infection are still unknown, neurological symptoms of COVID-19 patients have been reported worldwide, including post-traumatic stress symptoms or post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, anxiety, dizziness, headache, impaired consciousness, seizures, impaired taste, impaired smell, dysautonomia, and acute inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy. Moreover, in COVID-19 patients presenting at least one neurological symptom, the prevalence of acute stroke, confusion, and encephalitis stand out. But how SARS-CoV-2 reaches the brain? SARS-CoV-2 enters the body primarily through the nose and reaches the lungs. In the lungs, the virus invades type 1 pneumocytes through the binding to TMPRSS2 receptors, whereas invasion of type 2 pneumocytes involves the binding to TMPRSS2 and ACE2 receptors. SARS-CoV-2 multiplies in pneumocytes and spreads across the lungs rapidly. Infected cells release pro-inflammatory factors and danger-associated molecules such as ATP. ATP activates P2X7 receptors in type 1 pneumocytes and macrophages. Activated macrophages increase the release of cytokines, chemokines and ATP, inducing the cytokine storm. Released pro-inflammatory factors, as well as the virus, reach the circulatory system and induce inflammatory responses in other tissues, in part by activating P2X7 receptors. Once in the bloodstream, the virus can reach and infect the blood-brain barrier endothelial cells and perivascular astrocytes through binding to ACE2 receptors. During the infection, the blood-brain barrier exhibits increased permeability, providing the passageway for cytokines and immune cells across it. Thereby, infected leukocytes act as Trojan horses carrying SARS-CoV-2 into the central nervous system, which leads to the infection of brain cells. In the nasal cavity, SARS-CoV-2 multiplies in sustentacular cells using ACE2 and TMPRSS2 receptors for infection. These cells also express P2X7 receptors. Finally, SARS-CoV-2 can infect olfactory sensory neurons and use their synaptic connections to enter the central nervous system. Therefore, SARS-CoV-2 may alter brain function by reaching the central nervous system or through the cytokine storm-mediated effects. 
the result is a neuroinflammatory process characterized by microglia hyperactivation, astrocyte stimulation, and neuron demyelination. In addition, the cytokine storm induces blood clot formation and increases capillary permeability, resulting in embolic and hemorrhagic strokes. Next, we will discuss the involvement of P2X7 receptors-mediated effects in COVID-19 neuropathology on the cellular level. Distressed cells release pro-inflammatory cytokines and ATP. ATP activates P2X7 receptors that are mainly expressed in microglia and astrocytes, resulting in increased calcium influx, which leads to glutamate release. Glutamate activates NMDA receptors expressed in nerve terminals and astrocytes, which also enable calcium entrance with consequent exocytosis of more glutamate and more ATP. In this way, an autoregenerative loop is formed, causing a massive release of these neurotransmitters. In the postsynaptic neuron, increased calcium concentration leads to the formation of calcium calmodulin complex, activation of neural nitric oxide synthase and consequent nitric oxide production. Nitric oxide reacts with the iron sulfur centers in the mitochondrial electron transport chain, impairing cellular energy production and leading to the formation of reactive oxygen species. The reaction of nitric oxide and superoxide ion generates peroxynitrate and peroxynitrous acid, which can decompose into other reactive species. Free radicals can easily interact with cellular components, leading to DNA damage, lipid peroxidation, tyrosine nitration, and excessive S nitrosylation. In microglia, potassium efflux mediated by P2X7 receptor activation may trigger an LRP3 inflammasome assembly and activation. The inflammasome induces the activation of caspase 1, leading to the cleavage of pro-interleukin 1 beta and pro-interleukin 18 into interleukin 1 beta and interleukin 18 respectively. The mature forms of cytokines are secreted, worsening the neuroinflammatory process. Based on this, we postulate that during COVID-19 infection, neuroinvasion through the blood-brain barrier and increased neuroimmune response are mediated by the hyperactivation of P2X7 receptors, possibly through NLRP3 inflammasome stimulation. The hyperactivation of P2X7 receptor inflammasome cascade is observed in patients with psychiatric disorders and neurodegenerative diseases, which may increase the susceptibility to SARS-CoV-2 infection and or COVID-19 severity. Moreover, SARS-CoV-2 infection can trigger or worsen these brain disorders. Thus, P2X7 receptor antagonism, as well as inflammasome inhibition, might be a promising strategy to prevent or treat psychiatric and neurodegenerative complications in SARS-CoV-2 infected patients. Thank you for watching.